So, so far we've looked at the cardiovascular system, respiratory system, musculoskeletal system, and urinary system. Let's now go on and think about the adverse effects of immobility on the gastrointestinal system. And one of the main problems here is constipation. So, gastrointestinal system next. Starting off with thinking about constipation. So one thing is when we're mobile normally, the tone of skeletal muscles, for example the abdominal muscles and the muscles in the back helping to maintain posture, can all help in the act of defecation. So that defecation is a, an efficient process because when defecation occurs there's increased uh, pressure in the pelvis due to contraction of things like abdominal wall muscles. And that can be lost due to last, lo, lo, that, that aiding of defecation can be lost due to redu redu reduction of muscle tone, secondary to immobility. So defecation is a less efficient process and faeces can tend to be retained in the colon and rectum. As well as that, another reason for constipation and immobility is that peristalsis, the passage of food through the gastrointestinal system, is aided by standing because this helps to avoid compression of internal organs where when you're lying down the, uh, the bowel tends to be a bit more compressed and peristalsis is not so efficient. And as well as that exercise just seems to aid the whole process of uh, material being passed through the GI tract. So immobility does lead to constipation. But another specific reason is established bowel regimes may be disrupted by environmental and psychological factors. So it's very often difficult for patients to defecate in a hospital situation on a bedpan or whatever it is. It's just not a natural thing to do. And the times at which they defecate may be related to sleep or eating. And these can be all disrupted just due to the change in the, the environment and the daily routine. And of course, if the patients are ill or immobile or comatose or whatever, the diet will be, will be changed. So the patient may be fasted for some reason or the patient may be anorexic and not have an appetite. Anorexia means loss of appetite. So change in diet is clearly going to have an effect on the change of the activity of the colon and the gastrointestinal tract in general. So constipation is certainly a potential problem. How are we going to prevent constipation? Well, obviously, we want to maximise mobility as much as we can. But if we can't maximise mobility, then we need to think about two main factors, and that is diet and fluids. So what we want to do is give the patient a fairly high fibre diet, and that will add bulk to the diet. That will give the bowel something to grip onto to aid the peristaltic process, so there's actually something to be squeezed through the bowel. So fibre will add bulk. But if you give fibre on its own, that tends to dry out the bowel and you get dried areas of faeces, which uh, de desiccated, hard, pellet-like type faeces, which you do get in, in, um, in constipation. So we want to avoid the fibre drying out. So that means we need to give plenty of fluids with the fibre. So the key thing is plenty of fibre in the diet, but plenty of fluids as well. And of course you'd be giving plenty of fluids as well because you want to prevent, prevent complications to the urinary system. But it was, plenty of fluids will also help to prevent constipation in combination with plenty of fibre in the diet. So prevention, let's look at a few specific points. Be aware of the patient's normal bowel habits. So it can be quite normal that someone only uh, empties the bowels maybe three or four times a week. So be aware of what is normal for the particular patient. Ensure privacy, and most patients can empty their bowels much easier on a toilet, which they're usually used to, rather than a bedpan, which they certainly will not be used to. And allow as much as possible what is a normal defecational position for that patient. So if the patient's used to squatting, let them squat. If they're used to sitting on a toilet, let them sit on a toilet. Do what is normal for them.
high fiber diet, brown bread, brown rice, potato skins, fruit, vegetables, things like that. Plenty of fiber in the diet is important in combination with plenty of fluids. So if you maximize mobility as much as you can, carry out these factors, then hopefully constipation can be prevented. Because of course, as with all complications, it's much better to prevent them than to treat them should they arise. So we've looked at cardiovascular, respiratory, musculoskeletal, urinary, gastrointestinal. We're now thinking about metabolic changes as a result of immobility. Now, as you've just read on the note, there's decreased metabolic, a, ba a decreased basal metabolic rate. Now, the more you exercise, the faster your metabolic rate tends to become. The more sedentary you are, the lower the metabolic rate. So the metabolic rate drops. This makes this makes exercise difficult because metabolism is already slow. Because the metabolism is slow, the food is not processed as quickly or burnt off as quickly. So the patients often tend to become obese. And in fact, this can be a big problem in patients that are immobile for long periods of time, say after cerebrovascular accident. Especially if they keep on eating normally, the metabolism slows and they tend to become obese. The metabolism slows and the heart rate increases. So the treatment, obviously, is to keep the patients as active as possible. But if that doesn't happen, then the, the, the basal metabolic rate will drop. And anything you can do, really, is try and match the food intake with the reduced metabolic rate. Very difficult, because when someone's uh, immobile, then often there's not much else to do other than eat. So the treatment, really, is to try and keep the patient's mind as active as possible and try and distract them. Try and keep them interested in life, give them other interests other than just looking at the clock wondering what time lunch is going to arrive. So metabolic changes can occur.